Gabrielle Union say, we gonna need a little bit more wine, okay? <laughs> So today we're going to be doing a QA. and a I posted a questionnaire on my Instagram and my TikTok and y'all asked a lot of questions about being a content creator, being a freelance writer, and ultimately how to become a full-time creative. So I'm going to give y'all some answers, give y'all a little bit of detail, a little bit of backstory. And if you're new here, my name is Alexis Lawson, aka Her Black Hand. I am a full-time content creator and freelance writer, but I am also a spoken word artist, an essayist, a creative. So I'm going to be teaching y'all a little bit about my life and a little bit about the truth behind being a full-time creator. So if you're ready, grab a glass of wine, a notebook, and let's get right into it. Go and take it to church and wash it away cause I want that nigga to hurt but I'm gonna just pray it away. So the first question that we have is can you share any experiences that helped you boost your confidence? And so this is a tricky question because I feel like confidence is one of those fake it till you make it things. I think that as people, we overanalyze other people who we idolize or are inspired by and we think that they're more confident than they are. But the truth is everybody has moments when they're not confident, where they're insecure about things. And so I guess an experience that helped to boost my confidence is just like the little wins that I have gotten over the years. I know that as soon as I became a full-time artist, I got an opportunity to have my own gallery show and that was a big confidence boost for me because in my world, writers don't get gallery shows and to be able to have that experience and also it be in the beginning of my full-time artistry career that really boosted my confidence not only as a creative but also as a full-time professional writer okay so the next question is how do you find balance and prevent burnout <sighs> i'm still finding it that's the truth and i think it's because there's just so much that I want to do and there's only 24 hours in a day and I often feel like I'm at the race with time, with life, with opportunities and it's just like sometimes I have to remind myself that the opportunities that are for you will not pass you. And even though there are deadlines with a lot of the work that I do and just like people who are up and coming because you know everybody's going viral now, I have to remind myself that like small goals are still big goals i like to believe in this thing called the one percent goal rule and it's actually setting goals but setting small goals to reach that big goal so this year i didn't even do a huge vision board and a huge list of goals i did one percent goals that i'm going to analyze at the end of every month so small goals that can help me reach bigger goals so like writing two blog posts this month okay that's consistency and at the end of the year if i only do two blog posts a month i'll have 24 blog posts and that's still a big thing to me especially since last year i didn't do that but also something that helps with like not being burnt out is making sure i sprinkle in some of the things that i want to do and some of the things that i have to do i think that we have a lot of obligations in life and i think it's so hard to try and balance all of these obligations with the things that we want when fucking air is 200 billion dollars and we're just trying to make it and so i would say make sure you're taking time for yourself making time for the things that you want to try the things that you usually like making time for your friends and just prioritizing yourself because at the end of the day all of the obligations that you have you can easily be replaced you can't replace yourself take time to focus on yourself find out what you need listen to your body listen to your heart and that will kind of help balance out that exhaustion and that willingness to work harder and motivation where should i begin for content creation begin with posting begin with sharing even if you don't have the best quality of equipment even if you don't know how to edit well just start you cannot say that you are if you do not start pick um, a platform that you really like pick something that you're really passionate about and share just share because people want to hear what you have to say there is somebody for everybody pick something and start this is a really good question. What do you feel like doesn't get discussed enough when it comes to content creation? And honestly, I think it's like pay for small creatives. I think there is this idea that because you are a micro influencer or a small influencer or even just a small content creator that you shouldn't charge. Make people pay your rate. Know your worth and enforce it. As a small influencer, that just means I do not have a big following. That doesn't mean that my engagement is low. That doesn't mean that I am not going to produce high quality content. It simply just means that I do not have a lot of followers yet. Like I have gotten so many brand opportunities over the last couple of months and I don't have over 25K 
on TikTok. I don't have 5,000 followers on Instagram. I don't even have 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. And But I still got those opportunities. And I have been paid and paid well for them because I enforce those rates. And so I think that content creators, writers are not pushing their rates because they think that people are going to say no. Okay, that's fine. Let them say no. And if they say no, that gives you an opportunity to double back with another rate. Don't just let the idea of you not having a large following like the people you are watching because people are watching you. If they weren't watching you, they wouldn't have found you. So enforce those rates. Make people pay the rates that you have and don't feel bad about it. You work hard. You have great equipment. And even if you just got an iPhone, you pay that bill every month. Make people pay you what you are worth because you're worth it. Your content is worth it. And these brands are going to use your um, content and not give you no attributes and not give you no money when it's circulized and it go viral. So pay bill rates. Make them pay your rates. What made you go freelance? Ha! We're going we gonna to take a, a sip of wine for this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we just going to hold on to it. So, the real tea is, I got fired from my job. But I already knew that they were trying to fire me months before I got fired. And so, even before they started acting funny, like, why you being weird to me? They started acting weird. See, why you being weird? Why you being weird to me? I was already taking my freelance career seriously. It was like the first time I was pitching. I actually got my first pitch acceptance last year with the Business Insider. If you're interested, I'll link it in the description. But like that was the catalyst into like my freelance career because for so long I had no idea where to start. But that one acceptance like gave me the confidence to keep pitching, keep reaching out, keep talking to different companies and organizations who were looking for writers or content creators because there are it is a need for it. And so once I got fired... I was just like, fuck it. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do content full time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think like who I want to be. And that's what I've been doing for the last seven months. And, you know, ups and downs, the pay is not consistent. But there is nothing about my artistic journey over the last couple of months that I would change. But that is really what, like, pushed me into my freelance career. And I'm so excited. You know, they say you have a lot of things that happen in life that, you know, sometimes you just need that push. And I think that getting fired from that job, though I was a little bit sad at the time, but not really, because like I said, they have been trying to fire me for a while. I really think it was just the push that I needed because I was so miserable. I was so unhappy. And even though there are times where I really doubt myself and I don't feel like I'm making the right decisions in this content creation freelance writer journey, I really needed that push to, um, start my career because I know that I don't like working for people. And so that was always going to be a big thing for me. And so, you know, life happens. You get fired. You quit. It's a cycle. Okay. I knew that a question like this was going to come up. So, the question is, how did me and Nicholas meet? <laughs> so, me and Nicholas met at a poetry event in Raleigh. And I have been following him for a long time. It's so funny because a dude that I was talking to in college, he actually told me to follow him because they like knew each other growing up. They worked at the same like summer camp. And so I was following him, but I didn't think anything of it. I just thought his poetry was real dope. Never thought that I would meet him. And he was at this event one night and I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Cause to me, he was like a celebrity. Like he was, he was, he was saying big shit. He wasn't writing pretty love poems. He was saying big shit. And so I saw him. And also, on the topic of content creation and freelance writing, I actually did get a piece published by Metro UK about the time that we met. And it's called, like, um, Thank God for Those Sex on the Beaches. Yes. Um, but we met at a poetry event, and he was speaking. I actually, like, DM'd him asking if I could come, if I could sign up for the mic. And he was like, you know, I really don't know, but you should definitely slide through. And it was one of my first times going out in Raleigh by myself. So I was very happy to just be out. I was getting over being sick. And y'all, I have just been like obsessed ever since that day. I mean, like he's very much obsessed with me, but like that's a that's a that's a man right there. That I'm gonna step aside. I'm like, no, we met at a poetry event. I don't know why anybody would well, think different. You know, we're poets, but that is how we met, and we have like almost been together every single day since. So, yes, cheers to that. I'll drink to that one. Mm. Love all black man. Tell me, fin and fin Period. Especially mine. Especially mine. Mm hmm So the next question is, what are some resources that have helped you along the way? 
And I actually have a resource tab on my website if you're trying to become a freelance writer. If you just go, it's at the top, click resources, and it's a whole bunch of resources on how to pitch, places to submit to. But for content creation, I use other people's for inspiration. I see what they are doing, and I don't mimic it, but it definitely gives me some courage to put out the content that I really want to, that I admire from other creatives. So I definitely suggest, you know, watching people that you want to, you know, emulate or even even style the way your, your brand looks. I think that when I was first starting my own brand, I found a couple of people on social media that I really, really liked. Whether it was their Instagram feed, whether it was the content that they put out, whether it was how they engaged with their their audience like I looked at those people and I was like well I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna do it better and while I do not like I'm gonna keep enforcing this like success does not mean large following while I don't have a large following I think that I have done such an amazing job building my brand and building a brand that is most representative of me don't be afraid to ask questions I often DM some of my favorite creators some of my favorite writers some of the people who are doing the things that I want to do I DM them I reach out to them I am not scared because one thing I'm not gonna do is continue to be in the spots that I'm in in just because I was too afraid to ask what's the worst that can happen they can either ignore you they can say no they cannot give you good information but either way not putting yourself out there is one of the things that can harm you the most and I'm also going to leave a couple of my favorite content creation resources in the description and put some on the screen because there is a lot that goes into content creation whether you want to do short form long form Instagram management it's a lot that goes into it and so there are a lot of different moving parts that people don't see when they only see the final product so I'm definitely if y'all want a video on that individually on how to you know manage your social media yourself let me know because I'll definitely get that out to y'all because that's something that I feel like I have gotten so good with over the last couple of months since becoming a full-time content creator so just let me know and I'm gonna get that video out to y'all this is an easy one what's your favorite color my favorite color <laughs> don't laugh my favorite colors are turquoise and glitter yes glitter has a color in my world because I'm the star um but yes those are my two favorite colors what are your love languages I'm gonna answer this in a romantic setting I used to think that my love language was physical touch but as I've gotten older I realized that my number one love language is acts of service because I do a lot and sometimes I just need somebody to take something off my shoulders take something off my plate because that will help me the most you know I love a little hug but doing those acts that will make my life easier has really you know <laughs> it's a soft spot I get a little mushy you know what I'm saying the last book that I read I'm about to show y'all let me let me let me go get it let me go get it the last three books that I read, I'm really into like kids books right now because I am working on my first kid book. And so I read this book called Soul Food Sunday. And if you have kids, I would definitely recommend it. I also read Going Down Home with Daddy. Such a good book. All these books were so good. The illustrations are amazing. And this one, Freedom Soup. I don't know if y'all have ever heard of these books, but I picked them up at my local library. And when I tell y'all, they were so good. I cannot wait to have a kid. Like, I can definitely wait to have a kid because life is expensive and I'm expensive. But, like, just being able to, like, share those experiences and build out a library with, like, books with people who look like them and knowledge and history. Like, that is that is something I look forward to, which is why I purchased some kids' books now, you know, for myself, but also, you know, if I have kids in the future for my goddaughter. But, like, those three books, if y'all have kids, I definitely recommend reading them. They were chef's kiss the next one is what's your favorite show so my favorite show is this is us i'm so sad that it's over and since i'm not a person who rewatched tv shows i probably will never watch it again but right now i am watching how i met your mother the good doctor of course albert elementary and i just started that new like show on netflix where all the single people from all them dating shows come together i'm not sure if i like it or not let me know what y'all think about it but i just finished season 15 of married at first sight right before i started recording it so if you want to chit chat about season 16 or 15 let me know because i got i got some comments you know what i'm saying i got some real life comments okay what type of camera do you have i am filming on my sony zv1 but i also still use my sony a5100 it's not the newer version of that camera but the lens is good the body is good i'm gonna still use it but currently most of the time for my content creation i use my sony zv1 just because it is a little bit newer okay so this is the last question and it is what is the goal of yours for 2023 like I said, I am operating this year on the 1% goal rule, and one of my biggest goals is just to remain consistent with my content, get about 10 publications this year, and travel. I also get the opportunity to travel a lot with Nick because he is a traveling speaker, so that has, you know, helped me reach that goal last year, but now traveling internationally is one of my big goals, but definitely those publications, getting my portfolio up, and just, you know, 
content creation. I want to collaborate with some big brands. I'm not going to name names, but there are definitely some brands on my radar that I would love to collaborate with. I have some publications that I am dying to write for. So those are some of my goals that Thank I have. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it was a little bit helpful in inspiring you and encouraging you to start your content creator journey, whether that's through freelance, whether that's through writing, social media, because you can do it. Anybody can do it. Y'all see everybody is claiming to be a content creator like me. So just start. Don't feel discouraged. Be encouraged and drink a little wine along the way. All right, y'all. We're going to end it out. Let's cheers. Clink!